Hello, this is Michael Tracy, and this video is going to show some data analysis that will be used in support of an upcoming video comparing the zigzag and cool war routes for Mallory and Irvin. As motivation, people are commenting on the various accounts of Edward Norton and Frank Smythe and using them as a gauge for what Mallory may or may not have done. But modern data analysis shows that oxygen is not some minor consideration. It makes climbing it a different mountain altogether. First, using oxygen, there have been 13,203 attempts on Mount Everest and 10,329 summits. So for people with oxygen on their backs, 78% of those make it to the summit. And without oxygen, there have been 9,442 attempts and 209 summits. For people who do not use oxygen, only 2% make the summit. Of the 209 that made the summit, 14 did not make it back. For the total of 312 deaths for this data set, 130 were with oxygen and 182 without. Of the 130 who died while climbing with oxygen, 118 reached at least 8,000 meters. For the 182 people who died while climbing without oxygen, only 28 of them ever reported climbing above 8,000 meters, though there is a little problem with unreported high points for oxygenless climbers. There were 93 oxygenless climbers who died with reported high points, and four of those, only the 28 just mentioned, ever made it above 8,000 meters. Thus, the so-called death zone starts much lower for people without oxygen. That is, approximately 90% of people who die climbing with oxygen reached at least 8,000 meters, and it is fair to call that the death zone for people climbing with oxygen. However, to get the same 90% for people without oxygen, the non-oxygen death zone starts at 5,900 meters or 19,357 feet. And while the data is for all sides of the mountain, on the north, this would be below advanced base camp. Some of this data is skewed by avalanche deaths, but it does not change the fact that few people with oxygen ever make it to 8,000 meters. There are 3,999 oxygenless climbs with reported high points. Only 811 of those reached 8,000 meters. And looking at the 28,000 foot level, which is where Norton and Smythe made their observations, only 330 people have ever stood that high on the mountain without oxygen. Oxygen is not just a minor convenience on the mountain. It makes climbing it a completely different mountain. And as I'll get into in the upcoming video, using an assessment from someone climbing at 28,000 feet without oxygen to determine what someone could or couldn't do with oxygen is just a waste of time. Here, I'll also briefly go over the data for people who climb variations of the couloir route, and it will be apparent that the couloir is not some climber's paradise. A total of 270 people have attempted some variation of the couloir route. So why does this data frame have only 269? Well, because Messner spent so little time in the couloir, the Himalayan database does not list his route as a couloir route. And although Messner did little more than cross the couloir and exit, most people associate him with having climbed the couloir. So I add him back in to get the 270, but it hardly changes the analysis. The couloir route variations are difficult routes, with only 7 out of 270 people making it to the summit. There's only one person who climbed out the couloir along the small gully and made it to the summit. That was Phil Urschler, and he used a rope left by the Australians on their descent. He also had oxygen. The Australians did not climb out the small gully, instead climbing out much lower, but later descending via the small gully. So I'll give people some time to think about all of this and how it affects their analysis, and I'll have a video out shortly showing various photos of the zigzag and couloir routes. In the meantime, viewers can work on solving the latest mystery of Mallory and Irvin. Why did two professional photographers, with a total of seven trips to the north side between them, not show a single one of their own photos of the zigzag route and instead use a satellite photo? I did notice that a couple of people mentioned this in the comments, so it is good to see people are developing their Yeti senses. Don't worry, I'll be showing you some photos.